This is part 112 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing server-side processing for jQuery Data Tables plugin using ASP.NET Web Services. This is continuation to part 111. In part 111, we discussed implementing server-side processing using ASP.NET Generic Handler. In this video, we'll discuss doing the same using ASP.NET Web Services. Here is the request response cycle between those three components. The jQuery data tables plugin is going to call the ASP.NET web service. The web service will then call the database stored procedure, retrieves the data, converts the data to JSON format. The jQuery data tables plugin will then display that JSON formatted data on the web page. So let's look at that in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. Notice here we have got our ASP.NET handler, employee data handler, and this is calling our SP get employee stored procedure and the web page. Notice that we have the jQuery data table plugin here, and this is actually making a call to our ASP.NET generic handler. Now we want to use ASP.NET web service instead of this generic handler. So the first thing to do is implement that web service. So to our project, let's go ahead and add a web service. And I'm going to call this employee service.asmx. And let's go ahead and implement our web method. First of all, we want this web service to be called from the script. So I'm going to uncomment this attribute. And let's change the name of the function to get employees. And the function is not actually going to return anything. Instead, we will write the JSON data to the response stream. So let's change the return type to void. Now, instead of writing the same code again within this web method, I'm actually going to copy that code from our ASP.NET generic handler. So first of all, we need the namespaces. So I'm going to copy these namespaces and paste them within our web service. We already have system.web, so I'm going to remove that. And let's also copy the server-side code from our ASP.NET generic handler. So I'm going to copy all that code and paste it within our web service get employees function. And we also need the private function, which gets the total employee count. So let's copy that as well from the ASP.NET generic handler and paste it in our ASP.NET web service. All right, we have some errors. We'll fix them. Now look at this. If you look at the ASP.NET generic handler, the process function here, the process request function here, has got the context object. And we are reading, you know, using that context object, the query string parameter values. Now here, what we are using is a web service. So the first thing that we need to do is convert, you know, them to function parameters. So to the web method, you know, we will receive them as parameters. So the jQuery data tables plugin is going to post the data to this function. Okay, so let's turn them into function parameters here. So I display length that's going to be integer. So I'm going to specify that as int I display length, int I display start, and int I sort column, sort direction and search parameters, they're going to be of type string. So string sort direction and string s search. Okay. Now, I am simply going to replace them using these parameters. So display length equals i display length, i display start. and sort column equals i sort column sort direction equals s sort direction and finally the search s search okay 
So we have initialized these variables which gets passed to the stored procedure. And then we have one more error here. So here we need to change that capital uh, to capital letter C because we are using the HTTP context object here. You know, within the ASP.NET generic handler that's passed as a parameter to this process request function, but here we're using you know the ASP.NET HTTP context object directly. Okay. All right. So a web service is ready now. We don't have any compilation errors, so let's build the solution to make sure. So build succeeded. Now let's go to the web page. Now at the moment, the data table is actually making a request to the ASP.NET generic handler. Instead, we want to make a request to our web service, and the name of the web service is employee service. So employee service dot ASMX forward slash and the method name is get employees so let's call that function and look at this be server side so basically we are telling jQuery data tables that we want to implement server side processing this is the URL from where we need to get the data now we want to post the data to that get employees function so we have to tell that to the jQuery data tables plugin and I do that by using s server method option. S here specifies that this is a string option and I'm going to tell it to post the data. So the we want to issue a post request. The data for these parameters should be posted to this get employees function. That's what we are essentially telling here. Okay? So let's save our changes, run this. Now we still should get the same data. Okay, but we are using the web service now. So look at this, the paging is working, search is working, sorting is working, right? But at the moment we are using web service. So here is the HTML and here is the jQuery code. Thank you for listening and have a great day.